Are you ready, Monarchs fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Pick to finish near the bottom of the Conference USA East Division this year. Who would have thought after six games, Old Dominion would be tied with Florida International and Middle Tennessee at the top of the standings. Well, Coach Bobby Wilder did. A three-game winning streak does a lot to boost the team's confidence, especially heading into a bye week. So, where are the Monarchs now, and what should you fans be looking forward to as we head into the second half of the season? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder, whose team gets tomorrow off a welcome bye week. Now, Coach, I don't mean to stick it mm -hmm. to the Conference USA media who didn't have any faith in your team mm -hmm. during the preseason. I know that back in July, mm -hmm. you were not very happy about that, but who's mm -hmm. smiling now? <laughs> well, still early, as you know, we played two games. We got six to go, but um, that definitely got the competitive juices flowing, Bruce. When we saw those predictions, I addressed it with the team. And as you know, Bruce, you've been in sports a long time. Preseason predictions are uh, generally they don't come true, but I like the way our team's playing right now. We're extremely competitive. As I mentioned, Bruce, when I was at the media day, we got 17 starters back. We've got 52 kids that have played. We've finally been able to redshirt some players, and now we're seeing their development. And with our roster, Bruce, we have 115 on the roster, only 13 are seniors, so we're still a fairly young team, but there's a long way to go, and we're very highly motivated. Now, coaches seem to plan their bye weeks a little uh, more carefully now. Mm -hmm. I assume that a, a three-week game winning streak will give mm -hmm. any team confidence and a nice 20-point mm -hmm. win mm -hmm. over UMass last week, mm -hmm. uh, a week ago today, was a great way to sure kind of send your team into this week. Yeah, first of all, a lot of credit to Bruce Stewart, our associate athletic director. He works really hard on the advanced schedules to try to get the bye in the middle of the season, Bruce. That's one thing I've always asked for. And here's what a lot of people don't know, Bruce. When you count preseason six games, our kids have been going 62 days straight. There's been something with practice or meetings or lifting. And we've got 32 right now players that are banged up. They've got bumps and bruises. Fortunately, most are not severe, but we needed this bye. Uh, what I'm doing this week, out of the seven opportunities we could practice, we practice twice. They're getting five days away from practice. It's just academics, strength training, and then also, Bruce, it gives the coaches an opportunity at the halfway point to get on the road, recruiting our mid-season evaluations of our recruits. So this is going to help us get healed up, give us a lot of energy going into the second half. All right, so some coaches want their kids to practice. You want to mm -hmm. give your kids some days off. What's mm -hmm. the philosophy behind that? I always evaluate it based on what's our injury situation. How are we at that point? Last year when we had the bye before the Charlotte game, we were 2-3. and three. We'd lost three in a row. We just weren't in a good place mentally. I felt like we needed to practice. This year we're on a three-game win streak. We're in a good place, but we've got some injuries, and the only way injuries are going to heal, they get some time off their feet. All right, halfway through the season, let's quickly touch on a few things. Let's start with your quarterback, David Washington. Where is he now? David's in a really good place. He's playing good, winning football. And what I mean by that is he's averaging about 250 yards a game, running pass, and he's not turning the ball over, Bruce. He's only had two turnovers in six games, and both of them were interceptions. One, he threw a great ball, and the DB took it from the receiver. And another one uh, was he threw a fade ball in the end zone at App State. He thought the receiver was going to break out. The receiver broke in. So he's been very clean with the football. Number two, Bruce, I'm very impressed with how he's learned to protect himself. That's been critical. You remember in the Hampton game, I pulled in before the half. Uh, because he tried to run somebody over. Uh, now he's sliding, he's getting the first down, he's going down. So he's playing winning football for us right now. And the dynamic running back duo of Ray Lowry and Jeremy Cox, the offensive line that blocks for them, and that mm -hmm. Jeremy Cox run there in the second quarter of the <laughs> UMass game over on the sideline where, man, that kid looked like a bull. He does, that's, and that's how he plays, Bruce. And, and without the helmet on, he's one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet, but he plays physical. And I met with Ray and Jeremy this week, just sat down, the three of us, and we talked about the importance of their health the remainder of the season. As you know, um, Jeremy missed the Appalachian State game with a strained hamstring. Ray missed the Charlotte game 
with an ankle, and we can't have one of them, Bruce, carry 30, 35 times a game. We need them both to average 15 to 20 carries because if they're healthy, Bruce, I feel like that's the best running back combination in Conference USA. The way our line and receivers are blocking right now, it sets up our play-action pass. We need them to be healthy the next six weeks of the regular season. Coach, what about the defense? Very impressed with where we are right now. We've made a lot of progress. And these are six-game stats, Bruce, not just, uh, not just through the three-game winning streak. In, in the six games, Bruce, defensively, uh, we've got a turnover margin of plus nine. Our defense has taken the ball away. They're number one in takeaways in the league. They're number one in sacks, number two in scoring defense, total defense, third downs, number four against the rush. And as I've explained to our players, we've got a lot of guys back. They're playing good football, starting with the defensive line. But the key to this, Bruce, through all six games, those numbers I just said, is they're preparing in a professional manner during the week, and they're executing on Saturday. And as you know, when you don't turn the ball over, you make the other team go 70, 80, 90 yards, you're going to have some success, and we're having that right now. Special teams can win games for you. Special mm -hmm. teams can lose games for you. Mm -hmm. How about your special teams and then the evolution of kicker Brad Davis? We're playing really good special teams right now. We have our moments where we might give up a return or uh, we might not execute a block on PAT field goal and get one block. But overall, Bruce, our special teams are much better. And I evaluate special teams this way. What are they doing to contribute to your success in field position? And our average drive start the last three weeks has been 15 yards better than our opponent, meaning we've got a first down and a half before we start the drive or before the other team starts to drive. Brad Davis, he's getting in a really good place with his confidence right now, Bruce. He was three for three on field goals. He's kicking the ball deep. Uh, he's come a long way. So I feel good about our kicker, Brad Davis, who's a freshman, and our punter, Bailey Kate, who's a freshman. Well, still to come, we're going to turn the questions over to you, the fans. Another installment of the Coach's Corner and the Monarchs defense has seen dramatic improvement the last couple of seasons. One of the reasons the play of big lineman Boomi Rutimi, and when we return, the big fellow from Northern Virginia enters the one-minute drill with Brian Parsons. Be careful, Brian. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show. The One Minute Drill, we're here with Boomi Ratimi, big defensive lineman from Alexandria. I've got to ask you, what's the worst thing about Northern Virginia traffic? I-95, every time that I go home or come back, it's just the traffic is legitimately endless. Pe people say it's bad down here. I think it's times 10 up there. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. You're definitely right. Okay, Northern Virginia, does that mean you're a Redskins fan? Personally, I'm not, but my family is. Personally, you are a... Honestly, I'm an Adrian Peterson fan. So you like the Vikings? Yeah. And they have Taylor Heineke, too. Yeah, coincidentally. Conference USA, schools are all over the map, all over the place. What's your, uh, what, what are some of the coolest places to go on road trips in, in the league? Uh, I'd probably have to say, like last year, FIU, probably. I really like that, that like just seeing the weather. That was a really nice trip, and then I guess the trip also to, um, to Texas, too. I think we've been to Texas about twice for Rice and UTSA, and that was, that was a pretty fun trip, too. A few years ago, the defense was a little maligned around here. Got, got, people gave it a hard time, but uh, that's kind of changed the past couple of years, and now there's high expectations. What's it like to be a part of a turnaround on, on that part of the ball? I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing because I've – like, I mean, myself included, but I've watched everybody grow. I've watched new guys come in. I mean, guys leave, but I've watched the, like, the guys that I came in with and the class uh, behind me. I've watched us all grow into the defense that no one thought that we could become. Real quick, favorite thing about being a Monarch? Running out the tunnel. I don't think it gets much better than that. Ruby Rutimi has survived the one-minute drill. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. See you guys. Thank you for having me, too. Big guy seems so low-key, Coach. Oh, what, what a great human being he is. He was a walk-on, Bruce, from West Potomac High School up in Alexandria, earned a full scholarship. He's a Dean's List student. Um, he's just everything in a person you hope you get to coach. See, work hard, kids. Do well in school. Maybe you'll get a scholarship playing for Coach Bobby Wilder. Great point. Still to come, it's the Coach's Corner. Email your questions to me, Bruce.Rader 
at wavy.com. That's next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Time for the Coach's Corner. Send your questions to Bruce.Rader at wavy.com. First question, Coach. Tony wants to know, is there any reason this year's team has exceeded your expectations? Yeah, great question. The number one reason, Bruce, we've been able to have a measure of success uh, through the start of the season is the fact that right now we're a plus nine in turnovers. We lead Conference USA. We've taken the ball away 13 times. We've only given it away four times total, which is great for momentum. That's number one. And number two, Bruce, most importantly, I've been coaching 30 years. The team unity that I feel right now from our players and coaches is like nothing I've ever felt. The word unity, the word love, togetherness has been used more than any time I've been coaching. Thanks for the question, Tony. All right, Robbie in Chesapeake wants to know, there have been two extra points returned for two pointers this season. Was it an assignment breakdown or did the other teams just make a good play? Yeah, great question. The first one uh, that was blocked and returned for a touchdown, Bruce. The kicker was slow and hit the ball low. Your op time needs to be 125 or better. 1.25 seconds or better, it was 1.40. The second one, uh, the edge rusher timed up the snap and our wing didn't get a punch on it. And since that point, we've, we've increased our op time and our snapper, Reed Boos, who's one of the smartest football players I've ever been around, is changing up uh, his approach on when he snaps the ball. So we feel like we're in a better place with that. Thanks for the question. The wings got to get the punch on. Got to get the punch. You got to punch. All right. So no game tomorrow. <laughs> it's a bye week. Punch. Ow, ow. What are you going to do this weekend? <laughs> oh, so excited. I get to watch my youngest son, Drew, play football. He's a freshman. He's starting on his team. I, I haven't seen him play yet. So so myself and his older brother, Derek, going with, with his mom, Pam, and just excited to watch him play football. All right, sounds good. Next week, Western Kentucky, which lost a 55-52 to heartbreaker on the road at Louisiana Tech. I'll tell you what, Coach, let's talk about that next week. Next okay? week, okay. From, and then let's from, enjoy the weekend. That's right. All right, enjoy your weekend, fans. Uh, Have a great weekend, your everybody. Send questions for the Coach's Corner to Bruce.Rader at wavy.com. For Brian Parsons and Nathan Epstein, I'm Bruce Rader. Join Coach Wilder and me every Friday night at 1045 here on Fox 43 for the Old Dominion Football Show. Good night, everybody.